If you ever felt like your body has declared war, you know the challenge of living with fibromyalgia flares. One day you're managing fine and then either gradually you start to feel that flare coming or sometimes even the very next day everything is suddenly off. Flares can strike out of nowhere and can stretch on for days, sometimes even weeks, turning what seemed like an okay week into a battle. If you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm Daniela and welcome to Through the Looking Glass, where we foster resilience and inspire lives. Today, we're discussing the roller coaster of fibromyalgia flares. So come on in, stay a while, and let's talk about what it's like to navigate those unpredictable storms. For those times where flares sneak up on you, I like to break them into stages. How do you know that this is a flare coming or not just an off day? How do those flares start? Let's break it into stages. First up, we have the warning signs. This is that little nudge from your body, a bit more fatigue, aching muscles, or even a subtle shift in your mood. It's almost like your body is whispering, hey, slow down, something's up. But let's be honest, how many of us actually listen to that first whisper? I know I brushed it off more times than I can count, thinking, oh, it's just a rough day, I can push through. Maybe you notice that you're feeling more tired than usual, or there is this strange heaviness in your limbs that you can't quite shake it off. But life is busy, right? We tell ourselves, it's fine, I'll get some rest tonight and I'll be fine tomorrow. But ignoring these signs is like trying to outrun a storm. It usually catches up with us sooner than later. It's like your body was trying to warn you, but you didn't listen until it was too late. And it's not just physical either. Often these warning signs come with an emotional shift. Maybe you feel more irritable or your anxiety levels spike. It's your body's way of saying, something's off, but it can be so subtle that we dismiss it. It is so important to learn to tune into those early signs, but I know that it's easier said than done. Sometimes it takes going through this cycle many times before we start recognizing those whispers for what they really are. Then comes the ambush. This is when the flare hits full force. It's like one moment you're managing, you're able to push through and then Bam, every part of your body seems to revolve. It's not just pain, it's an overwhelming wave of fatigue, brain fog, and a sense that your body is on strike. It's a surreal experience. You try to keep going, maybe you even try to pretend it's not happening, but there is no denying it when a flare truly sets in. Your muscles hurt, your joints are stiff, and even simple tasks become huge challenges. There is a sense of frustration of being let down by your own body, and that can be really hard to cope with. It's in this ambush stage that I find myself leaning heavily on the support of those around me. Whether it's a friend who understands what I'm going through or just someone to talk to when it all feels too much, having a support system is crucial. Sometimes just knowing someone is there, even if they can't take the pain away, makes a huge difference. Knowing that you're not alone in this pain is also comforting. I know it's strange because you don't want someone else to be suffering too, but there's something so validating when you know someone else understands exactly what you're going through. This channel offers an amazing community for those who need to vent and know that there are other people just like us who understand. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is your reminder that I am here for you. Go ahead and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future videos I post. Next up is the reality check. This is the stage where you realize that this flare isn't going away anytime soon. It's like being stuck in a bad movie marathon with no remotes to change the channel. You're in it for the long haul. And that's when things start to get really challenging. At this stage, you start canceling plan, calling in sick, and prioritizing self-care because there is no other option. It's tough, especially when you made commitments or when people don't 
don't really understand what you're going through. There's this feeling of guilt, frustration, of letting people down, but also a sense of resignation. You know it's coming and you know you have to write it out. This is also when you realize how important it is to listen to your body, not just in the physical sense, but emotionally too. For me, that means having a little pity party, feeling sorry for myself. Then turning to what I need at that moment, rest, comforting food, a laugh. It's about pulling out all the comfort measures and distractions you've learned over the years. Heating pads, gentle stretches, warm baths, and let's not forget the little joys that can make a difference. For me, that's curling up with a good book, a cup of tea, or binge watching my favorite shows on Netflix. And yes, chocolate is absolutely medicinal. No arguments here. And during this reality check phase, there is a mental shift that happens. You start to accept that this is your current state. And while that acceptance can be hard, it's also freeing. It allows you to let go of the struggle, to stop fighting against your body, and instead start working with it. This is when I often remind myself that it's okay to slow down, that rest isn't just okay, it's a necessity. Then we enter what I like to call the waiting game. This might be the hardest part because all you can do is wait. It's like you're in a holding pattern, watching the world move on while you're stuck in bed. There's this sense of isolation that can creep in, especially when it feels like everyone else is living their life and you're just waiting. Patience becomes your best friend here. It's a time for reflection, self-compassion, and reminding yourself that this too shall pass. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to have that little pity party. Just don't unpack and live there. I've been there too, and I promise it doesn't last forever. During this stage, I find it helpful to focus on what I can do rather than what I can't. Maybe I can't go out and do the things I planned, but I can still enjoy some quiet activities at home. I have started some hobbies that require little energy exactly for those times where I need to be patient and need to distract myself. I try to stay connected with friends and loved ones, even if it's just through a quick text or a call. It helps to remind me that I'm not alone, even when it feels like I am. One of the things I often do during this waiting game is practice mindfulness. It's about being present with whatever you're feeling. I might focus on my breathing, do some gentle meditation, or just sit quietly and let my thoughts settle. It doesn't make the flare go away, but it helps me cope with it better. And finally, we reach the slow recovery. This is where you start to feel a bit more like yourself. It's not a sudden change. It's gradual, almost imperceptible at first. Maybe today you can manage a short walk or a bit more stretching. Maybe you notice that the fog is lifting just a little and your energy is starting to come back. This stage is all about baby steps, small victories that remind you that progress is happening, even if it's slower than you'd like. It's important to celebrate those little victories. Maybe you made it through the day without needing a nap, or you managed to cook dinner. Those are huge accomplishments and they deserve to be recognized. Healing isn't linear and every small step forward is worth celebrating. One thing I've learned is that recovery isn't about getting back to where you were. It's about finding a new normal, one that respects where you are right now. It's about embracing those little wins and understanding that they're building blocks to something bigger. Every step forward, no matter how small, is a testament to your strength and resilience. And as you move through this slow recovery, it is also a time to reflect on what this flare has taught you. Maybe you've learned something new about your body, or perhaps you discovered another layer of inner strength. It's in these moments that we often grow the most, even if it's uncomfortable. So those are the stages of a fibromyalgia flare as seen through my eyes. Remember, everyone's journey with this condition is unique and what works for one person may not work for another. The key is to be kind to yourself and know that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. 
I hope this video helped you feel a little less alone, maybe even brought a smile to your face. If you found yourself nodding or if you're going through a flare right now, hang in there. You are stronger than you think. And if you have any tips or experiences you'd like to share, drop them in the comments below. If you watched this video all the way to this point, I know you'll enjoy my other videos. So if you're new here, feel free to explore other videos and don't forget to subscribe so YouTube will show you when I post videos. If you've been with me for a while, thank you so much for your support. Until the next one, take care of yourself.